Uh, but let me start with his first uh, discussion, where, again, President Obama references a movie that he saw, uh, cut number six. Uh, 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 there, there, there's, a, there's a great movie called The Departed, a little violent for kids, but um, there's a scene in the movie where Mark Wahlberg, uh, yeah, they're on a stakeout, and uh, somehow the guy loses the guy that they're, they're tracking, and Wahlberg's all upset and you know, yelling at the guy, and the guy looks up and he says, well, who are you? And Wahlberg says, I, I'm the guy doing my job, you must be the other guy. Sometimes I feel like saying to these guys, I'm the guy doing my job. You must be the other guy. <laughs> so, you know, I guess that White House projectionist is paying off, right? Because now uh, the president can quote from the departed because he's got somebody there to push the play button on his Blu-ray player because he, he can't do it himself. But, you know, he said in one of his other speeches that he doesn't watch cable, cable shows or, or the news, but he does watch movies. Uh, so in addition to playing golf, uh, the president does watch movies, but he thinks he's doing his job. The problem is he's not doing his job. His job would be obeying the Constitution. See, when you're doing things that are unconstitutional, you're not doing your job. I guess that's like a bank robber saying, well, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, it's not your job. If you're breaking the law, it's not your job to break the law. But I guess that the president fancies his job as violating his oath of office, then he is doing his job. Here, cut number seven. So rather than wage another political stunt that wastes time, wastes taxpayers' money, I've got a better idea. <laughs> Do something. If you're mad at me for helping people on my own, let's team up. Let's, let's pass some bills. Let's help America together. So, I, you know, it, it yeah. is lonely, me just doing stuff. I'd love if, if, if the Republicans did stuff, too. Yeah, except he wants them to do the same stuff that he's doing. He's just, I, I, I wish the Republicans would just turn into Democrats and do the same stuff as me. But I like the point where he says, I'm not just going to do another political stunt that wastes time and wastes taxpayer money. Well, isn't that an admission that he's already done a bunch of stunts that have wasted time and taxpayers' money? He said, I'm not going to do another political stunt. Right. That means he's already done some. He's admitting now that he has done. He has engaged in political stunts that have wasted time and money. But he's not going to do another one. Thank you, Mr. President, for acknowledging the fact that you're not going to waste even more money on yet another stunt. The problem is that's what he's doing because he's also lying. So when he says he's not going to do another stunt, that's exactly what he's going to do. Except he told the truth. He, it slipped out like a little Freudian slip uh, that he admits. And here's another little Freudian slip. Uh, for the president here, cut number cut number eight. So when you, when folks say they're frustrated with Congress, let's let's be clear about what the problem is. I, I I'm just telling the truth now. I, I I don't have to run for office again, so I can just you know let it rip. And I, I, I want to assure you, I'm really you? not that part of this in the guy. I, my favorite president is the first Republican president, <laughs> a guy named Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a partisan guy, but I want all the Republicans to do exactly what I want them to do. I want them to act like Democrats. But that's not the Freudian slip. He said, I'm not running for reelection so I can be honest. Now, isn't that an admission? Because he was running for reelection before. So if he's saying, hey, I'm not running for re-election so I can speak honestly, he's admitting that when he was running for re-election, he was not speaking honestly. In other words, he was lying. So he said, look, I may have lied in the past, but that's what I was trying to get re-elected. See, now I'm not trying to get re-elected, so I have no reason to lie, so I'm telling the truth. Which, of course, is just another lie. But he's admitting basically that he lied which is really what he's saying here, right? If he's saying he can be honest now because he's not up for re-election, he's admitting that he wasn't honest in the past, right? That's what he said. He didn't just say, look, I'm always honest. He predicated his honesty on the fact that he's not running for office again, 
which again is an admission that when he was running for office, he was dishonest. Which, of course, are all politicians running for office are dishonest. The problem is they're dishonest even when they're not running for re-election because they can't help themselves. They're just professional liars. They lie all the time. I mean, it's just you know they they have a difficulty telling the truth. I mean, they have to go to Liars Anonymous. But it's amazing when he just, you know, they just admit it. I mean, and isn't he reading a prepared speech? I mean, did, did his speech writers write this stuff? Does anybody even double check this? Because you'd figure you don't want to write it a speech. I mean, maybe he's like, uh, you know, what's the, the, uh, the anchor man, right? That just he just reads anything that's on the teleprompter. He doesn't even bother uh, to uh, to check it out. Right, it's a good thing. I guess they're not writing any 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 curse words in there or something like that. But somebody ought to ought to double check this. But it's interesting that the the truth will come out if you just uh, listen to it a little bit. And I got a lot more sound uh, from from this speech. Let me just see where I want to cut to. Um, okay, let's cut to number cut number eleven. This is a good one. Republicans so far refused to raise workers' wages. I did what I could. I'm, 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 turns out I'm a pretty big employer. <laughs> so, so I said, any federal worker, uh, anybody who works for federal contractors, they're going to have to pay their employees a fair wage of at least $10.10 an hour. And I asked business owners and governors and mayors and state legislators to do what they could on their own. And by the way, since I first asked Congress to raise the minimum wage, 13 states have gone ahead and raised theirs, and those states have seen higher job growth than the states that haven't raised their minimum wage. <laughs> oh, he's just making this stuff up. They just raised them. How, is he, how does he know? These states, a lot of these, wage, these minimum wage increases just came into effect July 1st, or most of the states that have voted to raise the minimum wage, the higher wages haven't even come into effect yet. So how is the government, how is he supposed to say that those states are having job growth because they raised the wage when it hadn't even happened yet? Or it happened so soon that it's impossible uh, to measure it. But what I really like about this clip is he says, it turns out I'm a pretty big employer. No, he's not. The president doesn't employ anybody. The president is employed himself. He is not an employer. He is an employee. The president has never been an employer, so he doesn't understand a distinction. And I'll, I'll tell it to you. And see, when you're an employer, you write the checks. You don't cash the checks. The president gets $400,000 check a year from the government. See, if he was an employer, he wouldn't get a check at all because the government is broke. We're running a huge deficit. If you're running a business and you're running a deficit, you don't get paid. In fact, you go bankrupt. So if the president really was an employer, his business would be bankrupt and he would be he would he wouldn't have any employees. No, he is an employee, just like all the other employees. There's a big difference. You, when you're an employer, you take a bunch of risks. The president doesn't take any risks. He's going to get paid whether we have a deficit or a surplus. All he's doing is ordering right, uh, the government to say, hey, if you're going to contract out any work, or they're going to subcontract out any work that they've got to pay people 1010. And again, even that doesn't kick in, right, until the future. The contracts have to be up and remature, and then you got to pay people 1010. But that is not like an employer waging wages. That's like one employee, right, trying to get the other employees, trying to force his boss, right, to give other people a raise. Because who is the president's boss? The American taxpayers. And he's trying to force us, the American taxpayer, to pay workers more than they're worth. Right? And he's claiming that he's the employer. No, and he's shoving the losses on us. See, a real employer, if you decide to raise wages, that comes out of your pocket. The higher wages that he's mandating uh, on, the, on his uh, a bill, whatever it was, doesn't come out of his pocket. His $400,000 salary is not getting reduced. His perks aren't getting reduced. He's not having to share the White House. Uh, with some other families that are moving in there. No, no, no. He doesn't have to share Air Force One. They're not turning that into a commercial airline. He is not impacted at all by this order. But if you're a real employer and you decide to pay your workers more, then you automatically earn less unless you can pass on those higher wages to your customers in the form of higher prices, uh, which, of course, is going to happen. All this stuff is getting passed on to the taxpayer. Uh, because we're going to have to pay more for government services thanks to our employee, President Obama. 
Obama's speech last week where, you know, he's already admitted, right, to wasting time and taxpayer money on political stunts and uh, admitted to having lied uh, to get reelected. But let's continue uh, with some sound clips from this speech. Uh, the next one we're going to do is cut number 12. Be good. I mean, Republicans in Congress right now have shown over and over they'll do anything to rig the system for those at the top or to try to score political points on me, even if the obstruction keeps the system rigged against the middle class. I mean, the best thing you can say for them this year is they haven't shut down the government so far or threatened to go deadbeat on America's obligations. But it is still early, so... Now, now I, I, I always have to say this. I, I, I don't think that they're all terrible people. I think they love their families. They love the country. They've got a different economic theory. Maybe they don't know what ordinary folks are going through. Yeah, like the president knows what ordinary folks are going through with his, uh, uh, per, you know, projectionist, his 24-hour projectionist, because he can't, you know, push the play button uh, on his own or his uh, $100,000 a year dog handler because he can't walk the family dog. Although, again, you know, if you're at the White House, you don't even have to walk a dog. Just let him outside. He'll run around. He'll take care of business on his own. But no, the president needs a dog handler and a projectionist. So he really knows what uh, ordinary folks are going through. But, you know, the reason that ordinary folks are having such a problem is because of his policies, not necessarily Republican policies, and because of the Federal Reserve uh, that is printing all this money, doing all this QE, uh, which is raising the cost of living for all these folks that can't get jobs, uh, not only thanks to the Fed, but thanks to the Obama administration. And interestingly, he condemns Republicans for not uh, trying to stop an increase in the debt ceiling this year. That would be good if they did that. He's saying that they didn't want to go deadbeat by not wanting to borrow more money. You know, it's he, the president, that is the deadbeat. You know, saying that I'm willing to put my MasterCard on my visa, that doesn't make you frugal or responsible. That's the deadbeat. He's saying that we need to go deeper into debt. We need to keep on borrowing more money, right, because we don't want to deal uh, with the size of the debt. We don't want to repay any of our creditors. We just want to find more people to lend us money so that we can avoid paying anybody and go deeper into debt. And he's bragging about this. And he's saying, hey, at least the Democrats, Republicans rather now, at least they're not talking about fiscal responsibility. They want to be re just as reckless as me. That's really what the president is saying here. But here's probably his best clip. This is the best. We saved the best for last. Uh, here, cut number 13. We have come farther and recovered faster than almost any other advanced nation on earth. More companies are choosing to bring back jobs from overseas. Thanks to our leadership in technology and innovation, for the first time in more than a decade, business leaders around the world have declared China's not number one when it comes to the place to invest. The United States is, and our lead is growing. <laughs> So despite what you may hear, there is no doubt we are making progress. By almost every measure, we are better off than when I took office. By almost every measure. There's almost no measure by which we're better off. I mean, the unemployment measure, maybe because all the people are no longer part of the labor force, but labor force participation is a lot lower. Workers are earning less money today in real terms than they were when Obama took office. Poverty is up. Food stamp use is up. And he says we're recovering faster than any nation on the earth, any, any uh, advanced nation. Well, I don't know. What's his definition of an advanced nation? I don't know. But certainly this is the slowest recovery on record, if you can even call it a recovery. I don't think it's a recovery. I think it's a recession masquerading as a recovery. Whatever, whatever recovery people think they see looming there on the horizon is nothing more than a mirage. And when we get there, we're going to realize that we're staring at a mirage. But this whole thing is one lie after another. We're not better off. We're worse off. Uh, the, and the president's plans, the president's policies are contributing uh, to the deterioration for the average guy. You know, it's only the rich people. Maybe he hasn't noticed. It's not the middle class and the poor that are benefiting. It's the very rich, what he's accusing the Republicans of doing.